Welcome to another episode of Cape Gunworks Live. And uh, we're maintaining our sanity, which is good in this crazy time. So anyway, um, I'm just going to try and do something crazy and do Instagram Live at the same time, which is going to be kind of fun. So I figure let's do it and see how that goes. But so if I can figure that out. How do I go live? Hmm. There we go. I think we're going to get it now. There we go. All right. So it's Friday, 6 o'clock on April 10th, and we are going to talk some of the stuff that you guys want to talk about today and uh, hopefully get get some information out there. We gave a few, uh, good to see you, Donald. We gave a few um, interviews today to local media outlets, so that's good. And uh, the word is starting to get out about our lawsuit and, uh, you know, that COM2A and Second Amendment Foundation and the Firearms Policy Coalition is involved in, and uh, not to mention Goal, which is uh, involved as well. So, yeah, we're pretty excited about that, and hopefully, I mean, we're excited in the sense that we're hoping to get open, get our doors open pretty good, pretty quickly. So, uh, hey, Richard. Um, so, yeah, we're we're looking to see if any movement will happen. I know the courts are pretty closed and uh, for business right now, but we're we're gonna try to, you know, <laughs> kick the ball up the hill and see see how it goes. And basically, today the uh, Cape Cod Times called and we we gave a interview and you'll probably read the article tomorrow and the next day if you come across the paper but to summarize it we're basically just saying they were asking why we got involved in this lawsuit and i said it's just an unfair application of the essential services guidelines because you know again you can shop for a video game or a surround sound tv or you can go to target or you can take your family to ice cream or you can pick up a bottle of booze but you can't buy a constitutionally protected um, item such as a gun to defend your family in times of uncertainty. So that's really what it came down to. So um, hopefully that message will resonate with the uh, courts and we're hoping to get a quick uh, emergency injunction on that side and, and see that we can get the doors back open. You know, uh, from a financial point of view, uh, shutting the doors to business doesn't work long term for us, doesn't work short term for us. We have to continue to move product in order to, you know, support the law enforcement communities out there and also support the government entities that we have contracts with and the private uh, security firms that protect our nation's interests that we have contracts with. So a lot of that going on, not to mention all the people that work for us. You know, there's 20 odd employees here between full and part time and, you know, they're they're feeding their families and supporting their families and paying their mortgages with the the money that comes in each each month here or each week here. And uh, also we made the argument that we aren't eligible for a lot of the federal funding that other small businesses are eligible for because of the nature of our business because we're a gun store. So because of that, you know, and especially in the eyes of the feds who think we should be open, um, then, <laughs> you know, we, we uh, if, if the state shuts us down, we have no recourse with the SBA or with, um, you know, the feds. So we need to stay open to keep the ball moving in the right direction or keep things moving in the right direction. So, yeah, that's a that's really the it in a nutshell. Um, if we can't continue to support uh, our community um, through retail sales, then we're in a bad situation going forward long term and short term. And that's just the reality of the situation. So we'd like to feed our family. We'd like to keep you guys well equipped. And, uh, you know, we have more inventory than we've ever had in our store in the history of our store. And it keeps coming in every day. So uh, we are pretty well supplied up again with ammunition. So we have pretty much all the defensive ammos back in stock, 380, 40, 45. 38, 357, 9 mil, 
all those calibers are back in stock, which is good. We have some range ammo. Our big shipment of range ammo hasn't come in yet, and a lot of people are starting to call because I said hopefully by the first or second week of April that would that would ship. And uh, so end of the first week of April, we still haven't seen the shipment, and I still haven't got my shipping confirmation. So, but every, that's to be understood. They're really not picking up the phone and answering. They're out there trying to get stuff loaded onto trucks and everything else. So. Um, yeah, we're pretty excited about uh, getting that order and getting you guys equipped with some ammo. I know everybody's supplies were depleted in a lot of cases. And uh, yeah, once we get open, we'd love to have you come by. Donald, thanks for commenting. So we are doing cross streams on multiple platforms here. So that's why I'm like looking at all the different chat boxes as they pop up. If you have questions, you want, you want to talk about something in particular, let's do it. Yesterday, we had a real good chat with Rob Pincus about from the Personal Defense Network, and uh, it was a great time to catch up with him, uh, you know, find out what he's up to, and also pick his brain a little bit about some of his recommendations about that first gun for the home defense and, you know, the responsibility of the community to make sure that people are getting the education that they need and the training that they need on how to safely operate a gun and make sure they're not putting family members in jeopardy. Um, understanding the risk involved that comes with firearms, you know, and, and once you put some stuff in place, you put some uh, guardrails in place, how you can minimize those risks and make it so that you can safely operate a firearm in your home. So I got some product I want to showcase tonight. I have a bunch of uh, new stuff that's come in. I don't know if you noticed on my Instagram and Facebook posts, but we had the uh, CZ Bren 2 rifle that I'm going to showcase you guys a little bit. Hold on one sec. And uh, this is a cool gun. We had one on our range for a while. I did end up selling the rental gun, but uh, pretty sweet uh, gun. It's a 5.56 five, uh, kind of battle rifle, if you will. It's, it's, um, it does, the free state version has the fix, I mean, the folding stock and the collapsible stock and all that. We pin and weld that and we pin and weld the muzzle brake so that it's not considered an assault weapon here in the state of Mass. And uh, it has pick rail all the way across the top, comes with some really nice metal uh, backup iron sights that positively lock up and down with a, with a detent here on the side of the, uh, on the, side of the sight. And the uh, same thing with the back. The back has two different um, size apertures. It's got a, a large and a small, which is pretty typical for uh, like a battle site. So if you had to take a more accurate shot and you got good light, you can use the smaller aperture and be more precise. But if you, you know, in a, in some sort of, um, you know, quick or rapid target acquisi acquisition, you'd want the larger ap aperture there. And of course, plenty of pick rail for a scope or an optic on this. This does have a reciprocating uh, charging handle. So you got to watch your thumb on the left side of the gun. If you end up running the gun like this, you're going to get a a thumb full of charging handle, but if you keep your hand in front of it, you should be fine. That's how most people shoot nowadays, get that arm a little bit straighter. Some people are getting their thumb up on the Picatinny rail. I've certainly adapted a little bit of a shooting platform like that. And so if your hand's out forward of that charging handle, you're not going to have a problem. If you like to have your thumb in here on the magwell, then what I would highly recommend is you move the charging handle uh, to the right side of the gun, similar to an AK and you can charge it from underneath. You can, you know, roll the gun, charge it, and then bring it back up, and you won't have to worry about that reciprocating uh, reciprocating bolt. So pretty cool gun, though, the made in the Czech Republic. It's a gas uh, piston-driven uh, gun with a um, nice muzzle brake on it. The, we ran them on our range for a long time. The range gun did end up going down a little bit, probably after... Uh, 30 or 40, maybe even 50,000 rounds of neglect. So <laughs> uh, we didn't, you know, have a real good maintenance regimen early on. So some of the range guns got a little abused, which is okay. I, I, I don't mind that because it ends up uh, testing out the reliability of them over time. So yeah, so CZ brand, that's 2150. Uh, if anyone's interested in that, I got one in stock and I haven't seen those in a long time. So yeah, it's a pretty cool gun. So um, Shane, I, it's 2150, I believe. Let me just double check that. Yeah, 2150 and uh, haven't seen those in a while. And, you know, especially when you compare it to like a Tavor or something, which is right around two grand, 
Uh, this comes with the real nice backup iron sights, those metal backup iron sights. So I feel like that adds some value. Um, and yeah, we had a, we had one on the range for a while, um, but ended up pulling it off and selling it um, to a customer. So anyway, that's what we do after our range guns get um, kind of used for a while. We, we try to sell them, and especially now we turn them over a little quicker before they get into their beat down status. So uh, that's a good thing. But anyway, thanks guys for all joining in and uh, go ahead and fire out some questions if you have any. You know, I don't see the Facebook chat, so. Yeah, we're down on Facebook. We're down on Facebook? Yeah. We're not on Facebook? Yeah, it didn't connect. One of these days, it's all going to come together. When all the stars align, I'm going to tell you when that happens, and we can all go buy, buy a lottery ticket, which I think, can you buy a lottery ticket right now? I don't know. It's a good question. Oh, I wonder, maybe someone can check on that, because I wonder if the lottery is considered an essential service to the state of Massachusetts. That would be real interesting. Um, you know, it's a tax on the poor and those who can't do math anyway. Um, but hey, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> We're trying to get Facebook up, I think, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right, cool. So those of you on YouTube and Instagram, uh, Facebook says we're not essential. We're definitely not, obviously, because our doors are closed. So, uh, oh, you can buy a lottery ticket, son of a gun. Well, you know, trying to uh, trying to win the win the lottery is still an essential service. All right, we're live. Cool, great. I don't see the chat for Facebook, so maybe we can get uh, another phone going. Um, we do sell range guns every once in a while, Lisette. So. Um, when will we be selling the Spikes Tactical? Well, unfortunately for you, that Spikes Tactical um, won't work because it is considered an assault weapon in Massachusetts. So unfortunately, it's a clone of an AR-15, so we can't go ahead and sell that anytime soon uh, until that gets challenged in court and all that happens. So. Hey, John, it's going good. The battle is on and we're going to see how it goes. But um, yeah, so we definitely uh, you can buy lottery tickets, cigarettes and and uh, and booze. Um, but, you know, I can participate in the Second Amendment. So I guess somebody asked Charlie Baker about it today at his, at his press conference. And um, he had mentioned that they're going to stand firm. So it's going to be decided in the courts. Unfortunately, we were hoping that they would just quickly realize that, you know, we're one of, I think, five, I think there's a total of five states right now that are deemed non-essential. 45 states have deemed firearm uh, retail and range operations as essential. So, um, yeah, we'll keep it going, Devin, and uh, thank you, Angel. Uh, day is, is good. We're, we're doing slow and uh, steady sales, you know, just enough to uh, keep the wolves at bay. It's like when you're on the dog sled in the Arctic and you throw a piece of meat off the back of the sled so that the wolves stop and eat that rather than bet your heels the whole way. That's how it's going to go for a while, I guess. And, uh, uh, you know, it's funny because three weeks ago, everyone's like, man, I wish I owned a gun store, you know, because <laughs> business was good for that three week period. And then now it's like, man, glad I don't own a gun store. But I guess there's a lot of people saying that as well uh, in a lot of different industries. And I don't say that lightly. I, I joke about it to keep the levity so that, you know, uh, that's just how I stay positive. And, uh, but on the other hand, there's a lot of hurting people out there. So we're hoping you guys are doing your part to shop local. We're certainly doing our part to shop local and uh, we're trying to keep everybody we can and know and, you know, the, our favorite store is open and operating, you know. Unfortunately, some of the bigger stores, not the mom and pops, will survive and they're still open. Um, and, you know, that's that's the way that goes. And they'll survive the, the economic downturn because they certainly can. But, um, but, you know, we're on three platforms, so go buy a lot of tickets. Yeah, that's right. Um, we're kind of gimping it along, though. But anyway, uh, so... Yeah, if you win, don't forget who told you to go buy it. I, I used right. to fight this with, a, with two hands tied behind my back, just so yeah. everybody knows. All right. Uh, when will the court hear it? That's a great question. I don't know. I hope, I hope soon, you know, but I don't know. And the good news is I think you can do this kind of stuff 
you know, over the internet, you don't actually have to open the courtroom. But I, again, I don't know. Uh, I'm not a lawyer. I don't play one on TV. And uh, so, you know, although I've done a lot of legal work with lawyers, it doesn't mean I'm qualified to comment. So anyway, uh, we will survive. I agree. I'm not, uh, I'm not saying that, you know, we're cutting and running by any means. We're rolling up the sleeves and we're in the fight. So uh, yeah, uh, let's see. Uh, the Colt 223 pre-ban value. Uh, retail of a Colt pre-ban is right around two to, we've sold them as, as cheaply as 1900 bucks. And on the high side, 3000, depending on the model and what it comes with and its condition and all that. But I would say a sweet spot is usually around 2000 to 2100 bucks for a Colt pre-ban. And uh, that's a true pre-94 pre-ban, not necessarily the uh, pre-Healy pre-ban that you can do on a, on a uh, personal transfer. What do I prefer for a pistol caliber carbine? I think the SIG MPX has the upper hand on the CZ Scorpion, although I love the CZ Scorpion and they're, they're really nice to get and keep. And uh, hey, will you grab me one of those CZ Scorpions? There's one right over there. I'll show you the ones we have in stock with the Magpul furniture. The one with the Magpul furniture has really grown on me a lot. Um, so, uh, but I think if I had the option, and I don't because there's no uh, SIG MPXs to be had anywhere, um, I would get the SIG MPX if they were both side by side. The SIG MPX is probably 400 bucks more, but um, I feel it's a much nicer gun and it has AR style controls, which I really like. So. Um, yeah, so this is the SIG MPX. You can see it has that, I'm sorry, this is the CZ Scorpion Evo. And uh, this one has the Magpul furniture. They put the Zukov stock on it, which you, which they make for AK platform guns. And uh, it also comes with the, the Magpul backup iron sights, which is cool. And it has the Magpul extended mag release, which I think is a big, uh, a big advantage over the standard CZ one. And it also has the, um, the grip, the Magpul grip. Now this is my favorite add on or change out of the CZ uh, Scorpion because I really hate their steep angle grip with that big dongle on the end. I think it just looks horrific. But other than that, I think the gun is a good gun and you can certainly change out that original grip to the Magpul aftermarket one if you want. So this Magpul uh, CZ Edition uh, Scorpion Evo is a, is a great gun. Um, what else is kind of cool about this is Franklin Armory makes a binary trigger for it, and we've sold those. And uh, it has this ambidextrous charging handle that's kind of like an HK style charging handle on the, you can have it on the left or the right side of the gun for lefties or righties. The, mat, the safety is also ambidextrous. And uh, yep, good solid gun. We've shot plenty of rounds through our range version of this. We have one on the range that's an SBR and it's a crowd favorite and lots of people who come in and, uh, and shoot, love to shoot that, especially some of the new shooters when we do a range experience package because of the light recoil and the light overall weight. So yeah, I would go with the SIG MPX, but when you don't have choices, this does a really good job. So yeah, good question. here um, no we still have the pre ban AKs I've sold a couple of them over the past few months but uh, I had like 12 or something so I still have a couple left I have the Norinco underfolder and the uh, type 56s with the fixed stock so I still have both of those and uh, have manufacturers stepped up production yes uh, they are working, some of them I've been told are working three shifts. So yeah, they're really have stepped up production. And uh, the ranch rifles have not come in yet, but they are definitely coming. And uh, so hopefully uh, that'll, that'll show up soon. Um, let's see here. I lost my screen. Ah, there we go. Um, one other thing I wanted to show you guys is a uh, pretty cool AR builders kit here and it's a um, made by Timber Creek Outdoors it's this one is a gray it's like a titanium gray uh, 
package. You get the hand guard, you get the charging handle, the dust cover, you get the uh, the winter trigger guard, you get the takedown pins, uh, uh, the forward assist, the buffer tube, muzzle brake, gas block, um, you get the QDN plate, extended mag release, um, and a real cool skeletonized grip, not to mention ambidextrous safety. And you get all the little doodahs with it. So this is a really cool build kit that if you want something that's kind of all in the same, you know, uh, color scheme and all the, built by the same company. Uh, this is a Timber Creek and it's got the M-Lock uh, rail with the M-Lock attachment points at the three, six and nine position. It's got a QD uh, sling swivel in the front and at the midpoint of the rail back here where it meets the upper receiver. So if you got an upper or you got an AR and you just want to freshen it up and give it kind of a cool look to it, you know, you can always get one of these guys. Um, this kit is, I believe, 459 or 460 bucks, and it really updates the look and appearance. Plus, if you don't have a nice free float rail on it, then maybe you should get the, uh, you know, get one of the, we also sell these rails individual. The, the charging handle is an interesting one too, because it's, ambidextrous and it has this really big uh, claw so if you rack the slide like I do or you charge your AR the way I do which is with the palm of my hand back towards my face you a lot of uh, real estate there if you're going to carry it on a single point sling or a or a uh, or a uh, two point sling where it's going to rest against your chest that charging handle might dig into you a little bit but you know, if you're not running it in a class or something like that with a uh, with a sling. Sorry, guys, on Instagram, I just walked off the, uh, I forgot about you. Um, so that's why you couldn't see me. Um, but anyway, we'll, uh, I'll show you guys what we were looking at, or maybe Roy can. Oh, no, he's got the other camera. So these are those themed builds there, the uh, Timber Creek uh, build kit. So that's called the Enforcer build kit. But anyway, uh, so I know you're looking for some home projects, right? And uh, gun projects at home. So that's one of the things you can do. We went on and on yesterday, uh, or the day before, I should say, extensively about the, um, you know, doing like a Polymer 80 kit, which I got a whole bunch of Polymer 80 stuff coming in, uh, all the lowers and whatnot. So you can kind of, at home, manufacture your own handgun and whatnot. And we sell a lot of the other products, um, like the the uppers and barrels and you know the slides and all that for basically a gen 3 or 4 glock 19 and a gen 3 or 4 glock 17 those are the kits kind of we have in stock right now the the slides so um anyway john's asking how much are the cyber gun maximus 12 gauge it's one of my favorite shotguns we sell for a price point gun it's 399 in black and i think it's four 99 in camo and it we usually have the like a like a real tree or a, i think i think it's either a mossy oak or a real tree and uh then we also have the wetlands version so they come in three colors and they're great guns for the money 400 bucks and they come with three um i'm sorry they come with five chokes so you can uh change out whatever you're going to be doing whether it's turkey or goose or you know duck or or just regular bird or just skeet and trap or whatever so it comes with five different chokes and uh semi-auto has very low recoil um great gun for the money you can't you can't beat it so um what's that oh yeah no i got you so that's that's about the cyber gun um we do have some coming in shane's wondering about the ruger american ranch rifles um we don't have any in stock right at the moment, but we have some coming in, and uh, so hopefully those will be uh, those will be in sooner rather than later. Um, the cost of the Enforcer kit, I think, is 465, if I'm not mistaken, and um, the I think their MSRP on their website is 565, something like that. So um, yeah, but someone was asking earlier if manufacturers have stepped up production and. The answer is definitely yes, especially on, uh, you know, um, 
ammunition and whatnot. So that uh, the thing that surprises me the most is out of all the ammunition I have on order from January and February shows I've attended, um, the one company that is the most you know, faithful to deliver ammo right now is Remington, and they're the ones who are owned by a bank. So <laughs> go figure. I'm like, this is the company we're not going to see anything from. But instead, the Remington people have been keeping orders going, and the, the rep is staying in close communication with us, which is pretty awesome. So anyway, that um, I, I got a call from him today that they're queuing up another order to send out to us. But uh, they have been trickling in some 9 millimeter range ammo, which you know I know a lot of people have pre-purchased the stuff that I have coming in, the big truckload of stuff, and I appreciate those pre-sales. It certainly helped us gauge whether or not to to do it, to even do it in the first place. And uh, so I think we have, I don't know, like 50 or 60, yeah, 50 or over 50 people who have bought cases, so that's good, and we still have plenty left, so there's room there. If you want a case, it's 300 bucks. You can jump on our website and you can just pre-order it and it'll be yours as soon as the truck lands. You can come get it. We'll deliver it to you in our undisclosed location. Uh, no, we have, um, we have a lot next to us that we can deliver, make deliveries to because curbside isn't a thing for the gun industry. So anyway, um, but we'll get it to you one way or another. And so uh, everyone's been on you know, asking about nine millimeter, and that's kind of the status of that. Also, we got a bunch of 223, we got a bunch of 45, and uh, a bunch of 12 gauge shotgun shells, which are starting to come in. Those are the one thing that has been extremely slow. Got a ton of 22 in, got 30 odd six, 308. Someone's asking about 20 gauge buckshot. 20 gauge buckshot, I don't know about the 20 gauge buckshot. I'd have to do some digging. I think we're fresh out of that still, but it, it should be getting caught up here soon. Um, and even in the 12 gauge buckshot, um, the only thing I have is the mini shells. So the Agula mini shells, the 12 gauge I did get in are like number seven and a half and number eight, uh, kind of a target load for either small game hunting or for clay. So yeah, it's a, um, that's the unfortunate thing with that. But hopefully the, the regular two and three quarters and three inch shells uh, in buckshot and slugs will start to hit the hit the dock. So that's what I'm hoping. So yeah, just call ahead, Shane, so we can arrange for a pickup. Because um, unless you're law enforcement, you, we can't let you in the store. Um, we can't let you on the property, if you will. So unfortunately, that's just the way we have to do it. I have a ton of 762 by 39. Um, so I don't know if you, what 7.62 you're referring to, but let's go through it. I have 7.62 by 39, 7.62 by 54R, and 7.62 by 51 NATO. So we have all three in stock. So that that should um, I cover the cover all the bases of the 7.62 genre. So anyway, um, we still have that HK91, uh, I believe, is what you're referring to or is it the 93? Uh, the 91, actually, I think we have on a, a hold for somebody because they were going to swing by and uh, put a big put a deposit. I don't know if they did, but the 91 might be gone. I'm not sure. Um, and Rob, I know you were looking for 45. We got some cases of 45. If you need some, go ahead and uh, give us a call tomorrow, and we'll, we'll set a case aside for you and arrange for your pickup. So uh, yeah, 45 has come in. The 45 ship has come in. Um, how reliable are the mini shells in a semi? Ah, uh, I don't know, Gary. You'd have to test it. It's they're different in every um, in every platform you try them in. I was surprised to find a Turkish pump gun that I had on the shelf that somebody bought. And I'm like, there's no way these things are going to work in this. And they ran like a dream. So I would say you just got to try it out. Um, yeah, we the, the 12 gauge we got was um, was the inch and three quarters, Ed. It wasn't the two and three quarters yet. So hoping that'll happen sooner rather than later. Um, so yes, give us a call if you want us to ship some ammo to you on the Cape. We'll work that out. I can work that out for you. Um, and so... Uh, yeah, the CZ pistols would be a great addition to the mass-approved weapons roster. I agree. 
Um, that would be really nice. They're a high quality gun. They're a super nice, um, you know, target gun. A lot of people love the CZ 75s and, and, uh, you know, they're, they're cool guns. I actually own one and I love it. I, although I haven't shot it much, it's a fairly new acquisition. Um, so yeah, I really hope they do get them approved and there's no reason not to, I mean, spend the money. I know it's tough. I'm saying this to the manufacturers and get them tested. You make a good quality gun, it's going to get approved for sale here in Mass. It's not something that, you know, is speculation. And the people here are going to support you on it because it's a really good, um, it's a really good way to go. We're trying this new mobile cam. Yesterday, there was so much handshake. People were taking Dramamine, uh, but hopefully this is a little better. And uh, so, you know, excuse our messing around and trying it out, but uh, we're, we're, uh, always trying to improve the overall viewing experience for you guys. <laughs> I know just staring at my face and, you know, for uh, an hour could probably bring most people to tears. But anyway, uh, thank you. We appreciate uh, your comments. And uh, it was the 762 caliber one. Yeah. I don't know what one you mean, though. There's a lot of 762. So, uh, oh, 762 by 40 is a what's that, the uh, 300 blackout, we, we got plenty of that in stock, um, uh, 762 by 45, excuse me. But uh, yeah, so there's there's definitely 762 of all shades, types, and, you know, configurations here at the store right now. So we can, we can help get some in, in your hands. So yeah, the CZ75 is a cool gun, no doubt about it. Um, goal is... Uh, yeah, working hard to get the range open. Everybody, you know, it's a combined effort. There's a lot of moving parts to it, a lot of people involved. We have Goal, the Second Amendment Foundation, the COM 2A, um, the Firearms Policy Coalition, a bunch of different gun stores. You can read the legal brief and you'll see um, see how it is. It's uh, There's a lot of moving parts there and hopefully it's enough to uh, put the heat on and, and get us back open. So. It really needs to happen. And of course, we can do it in a safe and responsible way. You know, we could do it by appointment. We could do it by curbside pickup. We can do a lot. We have options. In fact, we recently, some of you who've been in in the past few um, few weeks will notice that we recently went to a E4473 system. So we, we basically, um, you come to the store and you're given a code, you know, or go follow the link on our website and you can go and start filling out the 4473 right on your smartphone or on our tablet or on our laptops here at the store. And once you get your information populated, you hit complete, we pick it up on our end. So there's literally no human interaction other than when you hand me your license to carry or your driver's license. So um, yeah, we can basically uh, complete the task at social distance and you can go sit in the car at that point will come out for the signatures and hand you your gun. You'll have paid over the phone. So yeah, there's a lot of good ways of doing it in a very safe and responsible way. Um, if you need some 40 S and W Tom, just give us a call tomorrow between 10 and six and we'll get it to you uh, one way or another. We have plenty in stock. So the 180 grain plus P I believe we have plus P, but, um, I know we have the jacketed hollow point. I don't know if we have plus P or not, but um, desperate times, you might have to compromise a little bit. And plus P in a 40 is something else, man. You love, you like recoil. You're a, you're a glutton for uh, glutton for snappy guns, huh? <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, that's uh, not a problem. So Tom, give us a jingle tomorrow and we'll, we'll get, get you squared away. Any classes online? We are working to get the basically the LTC class well the LTC class is out of our hands excuse me right now the classes that are about to go online and we will probably get to this this week here we're going to get the USCCA concealed carry and home defense class we're going to get the uh, USCCA countering the mass shooter threat class and we're going to probably do some sort of cleaning class or um, you know, maybe even like an AR armorers class. We'll see how that goes. Um, that's kind of the, what's in the queue and going to be pushed out. So uh, I think we're going to get the 
USCCA classes. And uh, so, yeah, the M&P 1522, I didn't, John, so sorry about that. Will you grab me one of those M&P 1522s the, on the left there? Uh, yeah, right there. Um, so we have a good deal going on the M&P 1522 for all of you who are willing to pay the money now and pick it up later, which we're really thankful for all those who did. And we have a huge collection of stuff in the back room of people who have called and purchased it to support us. And, and also it's something they're going to buy anyway. And so we're just got it all set up in the back. So once the floodgates open, we're going to have quite the avalanche of stuff coming out. So this is the M&P 1522. This is the standard model with the uh, backup iron sights. These have those Magpul uh, sights like we're on the CZ Scorpion there. And this gun is $399. And I'm, I announced a couple days ago, anyone who will buy a gun from us right now and are willing to uh, you know, wait, kind of defer their gratification, then uh, we will we will knock 50 bucks off. So if you want just the stripped version, it, it can be yours for 350 bucks. And there's also another model which comes with an optic. It comes with a uh, three to nine power scope and a bipod and that one's 429. And we will knock 50 bucks off that as well. So um, yeah, that's a, that's a pretty good deal right now. So come on down and give us a, you know, give us a call tomorrow and we'll, we'll get you squared away. They are fun guns and they are, uh, they are a lot of fun. So yeah, who would have thought they would have created a drive through gun store? No kidding, Bob. Um, and I, like me, I'm like thinking, how do we do the gun shopping network? You know, sit on your couch, eat your popcorn, have your credit card ready and we'll run the specials. You know, we'll get right into your, right into your uh, living room here and we'll start to showcase some good product and, you know, we're seriously thinking about doing it and we're, we're having fun with it too. I, uh, um, yeah, and he's like, I want that. So let's, uh, how much for the scope, just the scope? Um, if you want just the scope, I have some for 30 bucks. That would be a good addition to that gun. So we can go ahead and pop one of those on for you. And like I said, 40 bucks, uh, 30 bucks, they're 29.99 is what our scopes start at, what I would consider a good plinkin scope. Um, and of course, uh, yeah, it'll be the same prices in person because you'll get all the same class material. The book alone is like, um, you know, it's a $30 book and it's a really good quality book. Uh, he's talking about the USCCA online courses. Uh, we might be able to, you know, make some sort of adjustment to uh, obviously for the for the trouble. Um, we'll figure something out, make it worth, worth the while. But um, the model is the... Uh, M&P 1522, Annie. So uh, if you want that, um, I would say, I would say just get the one with the scope and bipod. Spend the extra. Uh, I think it's 30 bucks extra, and you get a $50 bipod and a $40, $50 scope plus some rings. So it's highly worth it, worth the extra. Uh, yeah, I love those Keltec RDBs. So he's asking about the Keltec RDB. Brian is, and I demonstrated one the other day, and. Uh, we have one over there. I should ask Roy to go grab it. And um, the Caltech RDB is a really lightweight um, bullpup AR. I mean, substitute for an AR. It's a uh, it's a you know a, a bullpup rifle that takes AR mags. And uh, it was the OD Green one on the left. It's in the middle section, I think, if we still have it. Um, but yeah, it's a really really nice gun. Uh, I think they're they're a price point gun, so they're nowhere near as much as a Tavor, which is like two grand. These are right around twelve hundred bucks, if I'm not mistaken. I always uh, get the uh, check the the middle rack, but stand by, guys. Hold on one sec. And it must be gone. Uh, I sent them on a wild goose chase. So we had an RDB in here yesterday, but someone could have bought it, and uh, but. I'll check out back. I thought we got more than one, so I'll see if we have them. But I like them. They take AR mags. They're bullpup. They're compact. They're great for home defense. And, uh, yeah, I really like it. So um, good deal. And uh, can you still pick up orders that are being shipped? Anything except a gun right now we can get in your hands, okay? So that's the best way to describe it. I'll get it in your hands one way or another, but... Um, we can't get the, 
uh, guns in your hand unless you're law enforcement. And I had a cop come in today to the store and he uh, bought a bought a gun off us and he was, you know, he was like, man, it stinks that you can. He actually felt bad. He goes, it's nice that I can buy one, but I feel bad for everybody else who can't right now because, um, you know, obviously it's it's just it's not fair, you know, and we agree. So anyway, um, we will continue to help and support our law enforcement agents and we'll continue to do business with them. But uh, frankly, we're looking forward to when we can do business with everybody. And uh, so that's a good thing. Um, thank you. I'll tell Arlo you said hello, Tom, <laughs> my dog, which makes a cameo every once in a while. He has been staying at home, much to my wife's chagrin lately, uh, just because it's been so chaotic here at the store. But um, yeah, we'll we'll get him back in our good routine. So, uh, so hopefully that helps um, about orders that are being shipped to us. Um, so yeah, a lot of people are planning on that Caltech RDB and they, they go as fast as I get them. Um, so, so certainly uh, when, they, when they drop in, they go out pretty quick. Even when I don't have people walking through the store, hey Dave, um, you know, it's like uh, people don't let them sit on the shelf, that's, that's for sure. And again, it's partly because of the price point, the versatility of the gun, and uh, you know, the, I think they're, in between the, the price of the bigger, more expensive guns, but I love them. Yeah, I don't own one, but I like them. And when they come in, I play around with them. I've never even shot one, actually. I probably should shoot one. It might change my opinion of them. It's like that car that you've always wanted to own and you love, and then you, then you test drive it and you're like, oh, why did I like this thing? But I don't think so with that gun. So anyway, let's see here. What caliber is the RDB? It is a 5.56, 223, and it takes AR mags. So yeah, it works out with pre-bands or 10 rounders alike. And uh, yeah, it's a, it has the uh, AR platform. So 223 and 5.56. Cool, so we will be open tomorrow. If you guys wanna place an order over the phone, uh, give us a call. Um, if you're a police officer, you're welcome in the store. Come on down and we'll help you out any way we can. We'll get product in your hand. If you've already placed an order that's not a gun related order and you want to swing in and pick it up, uh, just we ask that you pull around behind Barbie Hands uh, into that dirt lot next to us. We do have a deeded access to that property, so we're not, you know, it's just squatting on our neighbor's property but technically it's not on our property, so we can make deliveries to that uh, location. So uh, great, well, thanks for joining us, James. And again, I, I apologize for the late notice. Um, I have every intention of giving you guys plenty of heads up of when we're gonna be on so you can tune into the broadcast with ample time. And no matter what I do, I end up giving you about 10 minutes heads up. So here's the RDB, so I guess it was, out back or we had more than one like I thought and we sold the one off the floor and now here's the other one. Yeah, so uh, the Caltech RDB which has got the Picatinny rail all along the bottom and it also has Picatinny rail across the top. So you can, you can add a vertical foregrip or an angled foregrip or a flashlight or a grip light or something like that, whatever you wanna add to the bottom. The charging handle is ambidextrous. You can put it on either side and it will engage kind of like the HK 91s or 93s or MP5s, whatever. It racks back and then locks in the upright position, which when you want to deploy the bolt, you can just slap it down. And uh, yeah, that's how that works. The magazine goes in back here, hence the bull pup. And what I like about it is the magazine, let me see that mag. This is one of them free state mags. It's not a pre-band, but the mag goes in the back like this. I'll show you so you can see it here. And then where my hand is, I can eject the mag just by a simple move of the hand. So, you know, if I'm shooting, I'm shooting, 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 and I hit bolt lock, now I can just get that mag out of the gun with just a movement of my, my right hand. 
and go to my spare mag, come straight up and you know, charge the handle at that point and continue shooting. The, the safety on it is a very good safety. It, it's a nice positive uh, thumb safety, works really well and has tons of sling attachment points, none of which are a QD cup, you know, like the mil spec QD cup type, but they have para hook placements. So you can hook right on the top here. You can hook on the top of the back of the stock, and you can also hook in the middle. So if you run in a single point sling, you can hook in the middle where it would have a good balance point. So the gun can come straight up and also it, can be set in the front so you have a good distribution of weight for a two-point sling. So pretty neat gun. I like it. I'm a fan and uh, the price is right. So it's $1,049. So $1,050. Going once, going twice. All right. Uh, anyway, uh, any Glock 22, 40 S&W mags in stock? Yes. I have uh, pre-band Glock 22 mags and I have uh, 10 rounders so whichever you prefer so yeah I don't think you could accidentally release James that that's a pretty big gap that my hand is bridging I'm actually losing my good strong grip on the gun to, def to deploy that magazine so it's as soon as I hit bolt catch then I loosen my grip and slide the my hand back so if I'm firing it's it's not going to hit it and the Tavor SAR, the original uh, 5.56 Tavor had the mag release in that same spot. And, uh, you know, I never had that, had that set up where it, it would have fallen out of the gun. Um, so, yeah, I don't think that's a thing. Uh, all right, well, give us a call, floor guy, and we'll get you squared away. Um, the, so, yeah, we have those Glock 22 mags. I think the pre-bands are... 65 or 70 bucks for the pre-band Glock 22 mags and then a regular 10 rounder is like 30 something 31 or 32 bucks um, so that's the price on those give us a call tomorrow if you want some and a good bow setup for a beginner that's not too expensive want to bring me that ember and that uh, diamond um, edge 320 or infinite edge pro actually yeah, first I'll go over the Elite Ember, but both of these bows are awesome bows, great setup bows. This one's in a cool cobalt blue color. Um, this is made by Elite, which is a binary cam bow. Uh, so it has two cams that work completely in unison together. And when we tune these bows, it's pretty easy to get that squared away. And uh, this one is all set up with a sight, a rest, a quiver, and a stabilizer for 549 bucks as a beginner bow that's a really good price point bow with a lot of uh, flagship bow features it has these limb savers in here these limb dampeners in between the split limbs you got a split limb bow you got a really nice limb pocket um, this bow is uh, very lightweight and i have it in i think black camo and this ember if you're not going to be hunting turkey with it uh, the ember I mean, the uh, cobalt blue is a pretty nice color. Um, it has a great balance point. It's a super cool bow, powerful, and it adjusts from, uh, let's see, 15 inches to 29 inches and 10 to 60 pounds. So you can literally set this bow to where if you were to hang it on the string, it'll cock itself at 10 pounds, basically. Now, the bow's a little lighter than that. It's uh, 3.6 pounds, so it probably won't cock itself, but wouldn't take much effort. So you could get a kid shooting this bow. 15-inch draw length is ridiculously short, and uh, so if the kid could hold the bow comfortably, he could easily shoot this. And then it would grow with somebody, so it would be a perfect first beginner bow. And uh, then the, the other one is the uh, Diamond Infinite Edge Pro, or the, yeah, the, or the Edge SB320. The Edge SB320 is a little more, it's 429 bucks. But this, uh, oh, this is the Convergence. This is another great bow by Bowtech. It's not quite their flagship bow, but it's similar to that uh, Ember that I was just showing you. It's a $650 bow, so it's 100 bucks more, but it comes with quiver, sight, rest, stabilizer, sling, 
um, everything you need to really get going. And this one is the same thing. It'll it'll adjust from 15 to 70 pounds, and it'll go from 20 inches of draw length or 19 inches of draw length, I think, to 31 inches of draw length. So really, anyone on Earth can shoot this bow as well. So it's a really good uh, setup. So. Uh, and then the other one is a price point bow all the way at the end, the Diamond Infinite Edge Pro. It's 349 bucks. And I want you guys to look at the YouTube video of this bow because this bow is uh, 349 bucks. And a kid who's a professional shooter does a, a special on this bow and says, will a $300 bow shoot? And so he takes all the extra stuff off, puts all his real high-end accessories on tunes the bow and then he proceeds to shoot a match with this bow out of a possible best possible 300 he shot a 298 on one day and a 299 on the other day so a 300 dollars bow that shot almost a perfect score in, in a mock competition was pretty remarkable um, in this bow there's nothing but good things about it for 349 bucks it goes from 15 inches of draw to 30 inches of draw and it goes from uh, five pounds of draw weight to 70 pounds of draw weight. So again, you can grow with this bow as well. But the one thing I would recommend to people during this you know, self-quarantine, stay-at-home mandate, which uh, I don't know if you guys got that robocall from the town if you live in Barnstable, um, they're, they're recommending you stay home as much as possible. Don't go out unless you absolutely need to. And uh, so if you're home, one of the things you can do if it's not a monsoon outside like it is right now, you can uh, you can shoot in your backyard archery, or you can shoot um, crossbows in your backyard, or even air rifles. So we have some air rifles for sale uh, right now on our Toby's Target on our website, which is a pretty good deal. But these guys right here are a price point crossbow. This is the Excalibur Axe, and the cool thing about this, unlike a regular bow, um, you can anyone can shoot this bow from you know a 10 year old kid right up to a 70 year old man uh, obviously you'd need some uh, to be able to cock it but if there's an adult there that can cock it or you can buy a crank that adds on and basically a 10 year old could even crank it um, so under good adult supervision this is a bow that anyone in the family can shoot it's not you know, depending on different draw lengths and different draw weights like a vertical bow is. So you can have fun with this in the backyard, target shooting and whatnot. You could certainly feed your family with this if you had some sort of, uh, you know, injury that would prohibit you from drawing a vertical bow. You can get a crossbow permit in Massachusetts to hunt with these and you can hunt with them in several other states. Um, so it's a really cool bow. And uh, this one is $6.99. You get the bolts, the quiver, the scope, and all the limb dampeners and all that. So pretty cool stuff uh, for quarantine times. You can shoot in the backyard. You don't need to buy more ammo for it and all that good stuff. So uh, someone's saying they bought the Infinite Edge Pro for their daughter and she loves it. And I agree, it's a it's a great bow. What'd you say there? Uh, it's quiet. Yeah, it's very quiet. So you can shoot, um, you can shoot them and then you can, uh, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, so Travis, we do have any we do have the Caltech RDBs in stock, and you can have any color you want as long as it's OD green. So, uh, <laughs> uh, so the the pros and cons of buying that RDB uh, versus a AR, like a um, the question was, what are the pros and cons of buying that versus a pre ban AR? And I would say the pros are the price; it's going to be a lot less than. Uh, the price of a uh, pre-ban AR and also the quality is probably um, really right up there with a pre-ban AR you know all the Colts I see there's nothing real special about them as far as quality is concerned and so I would say the quality is right there um, the, the cons of it is it's still a post-ban weapon we got to pin and weld a muzzle brake to it we can't sell it with the flash hider in a threaded barrel and um, a pre-ban AR, you can change around and do whatever you want to. So that's kind of the pros and cons to that. So um, let's see here. Any thoughts on rewards program for non-members? Spend X, get X towards merch. 
Um, well, we're doing that on the on the purchase right now. We've extended this fifty dollars off to everybody, um, so we are offering that. And we're also thinking about making some sort of let's see how the online thing goes and when we get the full um, inventory up online. But I'm hoping to uh, to you know have some sort of non-member club type thing like you see at some of the other places like Target Sports and whatnot that for like a hundred bucks a year you get free shipping or whatever you know and we'll see how that goes but um, it's still kind of half baked so I hate to even burp it right now but I did and there it is so uh, in all its glory um, and we'll figure something out but uh, yeah we'll we'll um, we're always thinking of ways Matt so I appreciate you thinking along those lines for us and uh, any good guns with an FID who's a beginner um, yeah there's lots of good choices uh, Contrary to popular belief out there, um, you can actually buy a semi-auto with an FID card as long as it's not a high capacity rifle. So like we have these uh, Thompson Center TCR rifles, they're a 22, uh, a lot of fun to shoot and they are not considered a high capacity rifle on the mass high capacity roster. So like a Ruger 1022 or one of these um, Thompson Center Arms TCR 22s and again I'll extend that $50 off to one of these guns as well I have lots of these in stock in a bunch of different configurations this is the one with the Magpul stock so Magpul made this stock um, for for Thompson Center and uh, this gun has a fiber optic front sight so you'll see the uh, how nice that glows and it has a uh, ghost ring rear sight and we have a chamber flag in here so you guys don't have to dock if I point it, point it at the camera. Um, and it, the other thing I like about this gun is the top of the uh, receivers, the Picatinny rail is milled into the top of the receiver. So there's no added scope mount or base that you have to put on it. It just, it works right on there. And then the other thing I like is that it has a bolt hold open feature. So when you have the uh, TCR mag in there, it's making a liar out of me supposed to hold the bolt open on the last round so let's see how that goes so I think the trigger yeah the trigger is pulled because of this stupid trigger lock I mean trigger locks not stupid excuse me it's a much needed device uh, so let's see yeah it's not going to stay back because the triggers being held in the rear position by the trigger lock somebody must have jammed it back but on your last round, the bolt stays open, which is a nice feature on this, unlike the Ruger 1022. This will still shoot with Ruger 1022 mags, it just won't hold the bolt open on the last round. So that would be a great gun uh, with an FID card. Um, and if you want to get an AR with an FID card, the only way you could do that is with if you got the, um, the fixed mag AR. So that is entirely possible. So uh, I kind of just outlined line the, the differences of the 1022 and the and the uh, TC and those are the um, those are basically the big differences but Ruger is still uh, probably the the mainstay in the industry for a 22 the Ruger 1022 is somebody you know everybody's kind of first gun I had one and you know I still have that one but I do like their takedown model which kind of comes apart into two pieces and drops into a nice little carry bag and so that's a that's a great gun so I would get something if it was my first gun you know something fun to shoot something easy to operate light recoil that you can kind of learn on so a 22 or something like that yeah here's the same gun with a uh, same gun with the uh, strata camo pattern which is kind of cool I like that and um, so yeah I'd love to do a raffle with the uh, scar heavy but Raffles are not a thing in Massachusetts, unfortunately. So, uh, well, there's ways of doing them as long as you don't take uh, money for them. So you can do them as a pure giveaway. And we've done them like that. We've done that uh, with guns in the past. And um, we'll, we'll probably be doing something like that in the near future as we approach our anniversary date. So um, actually, yesterday was our third anniversary of being in this building. So. Uh, April 9th is the day we opened to members only in uh, 2016 so no 2017 excuse me um, and that was our first day of operation first day people shot on the range and we opened up to members only so that was kind of cool that was three years ago yesterday 
so right around this time, we always have a big member event, a big member party, and we do a an anniversary event where we have lots of vendors come. Well, all that's off the, you know, not even an option. And um, I don't know if we're going to do one, probably not until like summer. But in the meantime, we might be able to run some of those specials that we do at those events and uh, do some giveaways and do some fun stuff. We'll get a little creative here. We're def The brain doesn't stop turning. We're thinking 24 seven about, you know, what we can do to interact with you guys and make it fun and make it even somewhat tempting to buy a gun when you can't actually come take possession of it. So. Um, yeah, the M&P 9 for 299, we got them. And we still have a bunch of them, Alex. So once you get that license, you can call or you can call now and we'll certainly put it uh, put it on in the back for you. Looks like Instagram is about to kick me off. I got 13 seconds left. So if you get bumped off, you can join us back on Facebook or YouTube. So thank you guys for watching the Instagram live and uh, I appreciate you tuning in. And for the rest of you, um, I'll show you what we're talking about um, with that uh, M&P 9 for 299. We have a good bunch of these used guns. They're uh, M&P 9 with a, with an integrated, you know, ambidextrous thumb safety. These have Trigicon uh, night sights on them, so the lamps on them are still good. And uh, these guns were professionally maintained by um, an armorer for a private security firm, and they are in good shape. Some of them have a little bit of surface rust on the on the sights and a couple of spots on the stainless steel slide, but that's a uh, you know not one of those um, big deals. It's easily cleaned up. So, yeah. Um, open to taking in a rifle. We could take in a rifle, inspect and clean it. Sure, Richard. If you want to give us a call, we'll set up a, an appointment with you to pick that up in the in the lot next door. So uh, that's our that's our lot um, where we can help you out. Um, you only have to be 18 to join Joshua, unless you end up joining uh, with another family member. You can you know, be younger. Uh, we have a plus one membership. So if like a dad and his son want to join the, the kind of like a co-membership, if you will. Um, but yeah, we'll get you signed up if you want to, if you want to join. If you got an FID and you're 18, by all means, you're more than welcome to join. And uh, EJ, once things get back to normal, we'll have you. So I appreciate you guys uh, support of the, um, of the shop here when it's, crazy out there uh and john's lamenting the fact that the range will be closed on his birthday so i apologize for that john but it's not my fault i'm trying uh there's nothing more than i miss you know other than seeing the people that i see so much you know in and around the shop every day but you know when i'm sitting there working in my office and i hear boom 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 all day long people shooting on the range I'm like yeah that's why we built this place so I enjoy listening to it, and uh, so um, yeah, it's a good it's a good thing. So, um, but I miss it too. So, and anyway, uh, Bob's been shooting in his backyard. He says, "Get outside and shoot!" And uh, it's a great time to try archery. I agree. If you haven't done it, it, it gets you off the couch, gets you outside, breathing some fresh air, and gets the whole family involved. Especially if you get one of those crossbows. Now you only got to buy one bow for every member of the family. You don't have to like you know get it fit to you and you don't have to worry about draw length and draw weight and tuning it and all that it's kind of just sign and drive come and get one and we'll get you squared away shooting in the backyard we got tons of targets we got tons of bolts we got everything you need so um yeah so anyway i appreciate you guys tuning in um i'm being paged at home i got the message call your wife and you don't ignore these type of messages if you're a smart man and you want to be married for longer than the next few minutes. So anyway, uh, I'm glad to say uh, we've been um, able to do this each day and I will certainly keep it, keep it going. And uh, yes, SKS is our mass compliant and you can have them with a stripper clip or detachable mag. It doesn't matter as long as the mag is either pre band and it's high cap or 10 round and it's doesn't have to be pre-banned. So yeah, 
But anyway, that was one more question there that snuck in under the wire. I really do have to hit it, but uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow and uh, feel free to spread the word, like and share and subscribe and all that good stuff. And we'll put some uh, links up on the website so that you guys can see the specials that we're running on some. Uh, put them right under online sales. All right, beautiful. So they're on shop online sales shop online. through shop. Uh, the shop online link. Has yeah, so shop, go to our website, shop.capegunworks.com or just go to the regular website and you'll be able to get there and then click on the shop online and you'll see the specials. We got nine specials up and uh, we got some rifle cases. We got a bunch of stuff. So check it out. We'll put the links back on. And uh, anyway, thanks for tuning in guys. I appreciate it and God bless you.